back to Azini's program. Here are some of the latest updated news with me, Vanessa. World Court says it has jurisdiction to proceed Myanmar genocide case. The World Court rejects Myanmar's objections to a genocide case over its treatment of the Muslim Rohingya minority, paving the way for case to be heard in full. Presiding Judge John Donahue says the 13th Judge Panel found that all members of the 1948 Genocide Convention can and are obliged to act to prevent genocide and that the court has jurisdiction in the case. The court concludes that the Gambia, as a state party to the Genocide Convention, has standing to invoke the responsibility of Myanmar for the alleged breaches of its obligations under Articles 1, 3, 4, and 5 of the Convention. Therefore, Myanmar's second preliminary objection must be rejected. The court will now proceed to hearing the merits of the case, a process that will take years. Gambia, which took up the cause after its then Attorney General visited a refugee camp in Bangladesh, argues that all countries have a duty to uphold the 1948 Genocide Convention. A separate United Nations fact-finding mission concluded that a 2017 military campaign by Myanmar that drove 730,000 Rohingya into neighboring Bangladesh had included genocidal acts. In a 2020 provisional decision, it ordered Myanmar to protect the Rohingya from genocide, a legal victory that established their right under the international law as a protected minority. However, Rohingya groups and rights activists says there has been no meaningful attempt to end their systematic persecution and what Amnesty International has called a system of apartheid. Rohingya are still denied citizenship and freedom of movement in Myanmar. Tens of thousands have now been confined to squalid displacement camps for a decade. Asian countries should trend in coordination and cooperation with China for its voice to be heard. Foreign Minister Wang Yi says regional Asian countries should strengthen coordination and cooperation so that our voices are heard. He says that to inform the media about the results of his trip to ASEAN countries, which was completed. I have had in-depth communication with the foreign ministers of major countries with the topics revolving around strengthening strategic coordination with our neighbors. We should work together to uphold the hard-won peace and development in our region said Wang in an interview with CGTN, South China's Guangxi Tsuan Autonomous Region. I think our common position or our common voice is to uphold open regionalism, advocate true multilateralism and uphold effective regional cooperation with ASEAN at its core. At the same time, through multilateral meetings to be held this year, we will strengthen our solidarity and coordination, make our voice heard and put forward our proposals and enable Asia to play a more active and important role in today's turbulent and volatile world. Wong in Nanning to host a bilateral meeting respectively with Vietnam and Cambodia. Four people died after a shooting incident at the university graduation in the Philippines. The police reports three people, including a former mayor in the volatile southern Philippines, dead and two more are wounded from a shooting incident at the university graduation's rights in the capital. In addition, Quezon City Police Chief Ramos Medina informs the suspect, wounded in the shootout with the campus security officer, is already in authorities' custody and under interrogation. Ramos Medina adds, Rose Furigay, former mayor of the southern Lamitan city, was shot when she attended the graduation of her daughter at the law school of Ateneo de Manila University. The suspect, who had no relative at the graduation, was also a native of Lamitan city in Basilan province, a stronghold of Abu Sayyaf, a pro-Islamist state extremist group known for its banditry and kidnapping. The police says the two other casualties were campus security officers and an identified male. Ateneo cancelled the graduation ceremony because of the shooting incident. Private security in the Philippines carry either handguns or shotguns, and firearms are a common sight in shopping malls, offices, banks, restaurants, and even schools. 
China expects Indonesian president's visit to strengthen bilateral relations. Foreign Minister Spokesman Wang Wenbin at a press briefing in Beijing says China expects Indonesian President Joko Widodo's visits to further deepen strategic mutual trust and practical cooperation between the two countries. China expects the President Widodo's visit will further deepen strategic mutual trust and practical cooperation between the two sides, set a good example of the mutually beneficial relationship between major developing countries in the new era build a model of common development and make the two countries pioneers of South-South cooperation. Indonesia holds the presidency of the Group of 20 G20 this year. China highly appreciates and firmly supports Indonesia's constructive role as G20 chair. During his visit to China, President Widodo will have face-to-face -face communication with Chinese leaders on the G20 summit to explore how to handle the outstanding global challenges, demonstrate solidarity and coordination among major developing countries, and jointly inject more positive energy into the future development of the world economy and make more new contributions to global equity and justice. Both countries have confirmed the general direction of building a China-Indonesia community of shared future, built a new pattern of bilateral cooperation driven by political, economic, cultural and maritime exchanges, and interpreted the rich connotation of the comprehensive strategic partnership. Thailand Prime Minister survives partner confidence vote in final test before election. Thailand Prime Minister Prayut chan ocha and 10 cabinet ministers survived no-confidence votes in parliament, with the government emerging on top in Prayut's last major test ahead of a general election due within 11 months. The number of those opposing the no-confidence motion is 256, 9 abstained, the votes and no absentee votes. The votes against him, Prayut chan ocha is less than the required majority, which means the consensus is that he has gained confidence. <laughs> the 60-year-old former army chief in power since a coup he led in 2014 received 256 votes in favors and 206 against with nine abstentions, securing his position as a premier until his term ends in March 2023. Three deputy prime ministers and seven other cabinet members also survived the censure motion. Prayut chan ocha thanks for the session in parliament and saying this is democracy. I would like to thank those who joined the parliament session today, everyone. This is democracy taking place in a parliamentary system. Thank you so much. The opposition had needed more than 239 of the 477 parliamentary votes to oust the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister and 10 cabinet members underwent four days of grilling life on television from an opposition that accused them of corruption and economic mismanagement in an effort to discredit the ruling 17-party coalition before the next polls. Prayut has given no indication of when an election will be called. China criticizes Japan's defense white paper. A spokesman says Chinese Foreign Minister firmly opposes Japan's new defense white paper and sent stern representations to Tokyo about it. Japan warned in the annual paper earlier of escalating national security threats, including repercussions from Russia's war with Ukraine, Chinese intimidation of Taiwan, and vulnerable technology supply chains. Chinese Foreign Minister spokesman Wang Wenbin at the daily news briefing says that the report exaggerates the so-called China threat and interferes in Chinese internal affairs of Taiwan. Japan's new version of the defense white paper accuses and smears China's defense policy, normal military development and legitimate maritime activities, exaggerates the so-called China threat and interferes in China's internal affairs on the Taiwan issue, to which China expresses its strong dissatisfaction and resolute opposition and has sent stern representation to the Japanese side. Japan's paper described Russia's attack on Ukraine as a serious violation of international law and raises concerns that it used force to resolve a dispute established a precedent that threatens the security of neighboring Taiwan, which Beijing views as its own territory. 
Thailand issues recovery plan to boost international tourism in 2023. The National Tourism Authority of Thailand issues a tourism revitalization plan for 2023, aiming to take the tailwind of recent tourism recovery to resume 80% of the pre-COVID level. Since the country relieved its COVID-19 restrictions on the international travel in May, more and more tourists have been flooding into its scenic spots with over 2 million foreign arrivals as of the end of June 2022. To restore tourism, one of the country's pillar industries, TAT revealed plans targeting total tourism revenue, 47 billion US dollar, or 80% of 2019. The increased national vaccination coverage is pumping up the country's determination to absorb more tourists. It has been carrying out various measures, such as funding marketing campaigns by airlines, to encourage the opening of more routes. And thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon. Enjoy your weekdays ahead. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye.